The United States has officially denied any role in a move to topple and oust Imran Khan as Pakistan's Prime Minister. But Mr. Khan continues to harp on a foreign hand. I'm Barkhadat Yo with the Mojo story. We'll be joined by Hossein Haqqani of the Hudson Institute, Pakistan's former ambassador to the United States, in a few minutes from now as we do a deep dive into the unfolding drama in our neighboring country of Pakistan, where Mr. Khan is adamant that he has access to a diplomatic cable that suggests an American hand in trying to get him to leave office. For those who believe that Imran Khan would have resigned by now, it has not happened. In fact, he's digging his heels in and insisting that this cable is proof that what he was alleging is correct. That a conspiracy based out of London where Nawaz Sharif is in exile, enabled by the Americans, is designed to interfere with Pakistan's domestic political process. Let's go across now to someone who has uh, really been on the insides of Pakistan's power tracks and has had his own hands burned uh, in the past of being accused of uh, being too close to the Americans. So life really does turn full circle. We're joined by Hossein Haqqani, one of our uh, best uh, known and most incisive authors and analysts on Pakistan, uh, leading the Hudson Institute out of Washington, D.C. It's great to see you again, Hossein. Are you struck by the many ironies uh, of this moment? Well, uh, Imran Khan always... Uh, uh, projected himself as this great cricketer uh, and no great cricketer after he has already lost his wicket would continue to stand on the crease saying this is all because someone in the crowd conspired against him. So he has actually uh, sort of lost face in a very, very big way. And now as far as this so-called letter is concerned, apparently it is a communication from the Pakistani ambassador uh, to the United States to the government of Pakistan, in which he's telling them, this is what American officials are saying. This is a perfectly normal communication. I sent many cables when I was ambassador telling the Pakistani government of what American officials thought about Pakistan. I'm sure that there are some Indian cables in which some Indian diplomat is reporting that people in Islamabad have told him that there can be no good relations as long as so-and-so or so-and-so is in power. That is not a conspiracy. And that is certainly not the reason why Mr. Khan has lost his majority in parliament. Let me ask you this. You borrowed from cricket and sports to say that effectively Imran Khan is being a sore loser, a poor loser. He's blaming everybody but himself uh, for his defeat. Yes, indeed. Look, here is the basic arithmetic. Imran Khan did not win the 2018 election outright. He formed a government with three smaller parties, the MQM, which had seven seats, the PMLQ, which had five seats, and the Baluchistan Awam Party, which had another five seats. That was 17 seats that took his total to 176. The majority in Pakistan's parliament comes to 172. Well, out of those allies, two have defected. The uh, Balistan Awami Party and the MQM have moved into the opposition. That is a net loss of 12 seats. 12 minus 176 is already a minority. Now, there are 22 uh, defectors in the PTI who have publicly declared that they are defecting and they do not support the government anymore. That would take the total to a really whopping 196 or 198. So he has lost his majority in parliament and under normal circumstances, he should resign and step down. Problem is, he's worried about his political future uh, mm. because he always projected himself as the messiah. And there is a hard core of supporters that believes him. They believe that everybody who doesn't agree with him is a traitor. Uh, they are uh, conspiring or uh, against Pakistan or Islam. And so this is him playing to that gallery for the future. He's also hoping that there are people in the military, especially in the middle ranks, who can easily be swayed by this kind of sentiment that, oh, Pakistan is under attack. And his last hope was 
that if he stands up in parliament and waves this so-called letter, which is wrongly being presented as a letter because it's actually a diplomatic cable, uh, then he can do what Mr. Zulfikar Ali Bhutto did in his last days, convinced a lot of people that Henry Kissinger had threatened him and the, and, and the campaign was uh, 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 the Pakistan National Alliance campaign against him was actually a U.S. conspiracy. Here's the difference. Uh, if, for example, uh, uh, Mr. Bhutto used to argue in 1977 that the American dollar uh, had become so ubiquitous in Pakistan that the parity between the Pakistan rupee and the dollar had changed in favor of the rupee because of the availability of the dollar. No such thing is happening right now. In fact, the Pakistan rupee is in free fall because of bad economic policies of Imran Khan's government. So the truth is there is just no evidence of any foreign hand. Now, do many governments in the world? Now, I can say this on your show that there are at least five governments whose leaders I've spoken to who have said to me, we do not see good relations between Pakistan and the United States till Imran Khan is in office. That doesn't mean those five governments are about to come into Pakistan and topple the government. All they are saying is we can't deal with this man. He's which, 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 which five governments are these? I will not name them. It's not appropriate because this was in confidence. But they are former or current friends of Pakistan. There are aid donors. These are friendly countries. So my point, and I, and I see people in my capacity as a think tank individual in, in Washington, D.C. Mm. My point being that people make these remarks. And this is part of normal diplomatic action. Every now and then you come across a Pakistani official saying, we can't deal. Didn't they say that we couldn't can't deal with Ashraf Ghani many times? Didn't don't people say, oh, we can't deal with the Modi government. They are too extreme on certain issues. These are things diplomats say to each other. Now the images a... the images you're seeing right now are of Imran Khan meeting with Vladimir Putin. Those loyal to Imran Khan suggest that that meeting is what made the Americans see red and that's what formed the basis of the diplomatic well, cable sent yeah. to Islamabad. Well, look, I mean, that was definitely the final nail in the coffin of U.S.-Pakistan relations under Imran Khan. Uh, images stay with people. On the day that Vladimir Putin is attacking uh, Ukraine. Uh, Imran Khan shows up and not only shows up and stands next to Putin, who is being made an international pariah, he also says words to the effect, wow, I'm so excited. This is exciting time, showing total disregard for the sentiment of the rest of the world. An overwhelming majority voted f against uh, Russia in the United Nations General Assembly. Uh, we must remember that. But India also abstained along with Pakistan. There is no reaction against India of the same magnitude. There is no conspiracy to topple the government because Prime Minister Modi has a solid majority in parliament. This is not about America. Yes, is the American government looking forward to dealing with a new government in Pakistan? Possibly. Many people would. But the fact remains that this is a domestic Pakistan matter in which Imran Khan mishandled his allies and his own party men. Now, even if the defectors are not allowed to vote, Imran Khan has lost his majority. Look, there's a there's there's a great deal of anti-America sentiment in Pakistan. And always I mean, has been. Always has been. And even when the Americans took out uh, Osama bin Laden, uh, and you remember these years well, uh, there was an attempt by some of you to strengthen the civilian hold over Pakistan. And you were among those. You've not been able to go back home. You were among those who was, you know, who was sort of accused by Pakistan's far right of colluding uh, with the Americans. Today, Imran is invoking that American hand again, uh, Hussain. Do you think that there will be people within the military because clearly that's what he's banking on to pit a section of the Pakistan army against another section of the Pakistan army. Do you think that there will be takers for his theory as he presents this cable uh, at an in-camera meeting of a, a parliamentary panel of Pakistan's national security? Remember one thing, the Pakistan army is an, a, a disciplined institution that obeys its commander, the chief of army staff. Uh, it is very clear that the chief of army staff at the present moment does not believe in the conspiracy theories that Imran Khan is espousing. It's also very clear that he and his image, uh, senior colleagues have learned the lesson of being seen as too close to a civilian political actor. And so they have backed away from an active role in day-to-day -day politics. The new head of the ISI 
is hardly seen in public. He doesn't like being photographed. Those are all signs that the army really wants to do what it has done at other times in Pakistani history, backed away a little bit. Doesn't mean the army loses its importance in Pakistan's public and political life. It will remain important. But the point is, at this moment, they don't want to be seen as the guys who are actually telling politician A or politician B to do X or Y. Now, that is the situation at this moment. So therefore, the chance that the army will intervene to help Mr. Imran Khan, who has destroyed the country's economy, who is destroying the relationship with the United States, who has made it impossible for Pakistan to have dialogue with India, uh, who is uh, has also annoyed China, Saudi Arabia, United Arab Emirates, governments that are friendly to Pakistan and have supported Pakistan. That is just a pipe dream. Basically, here is a guy whose wickets have been clean, bold, and he does not want to admit to that. And his ego is too massive. One of the reasons why he is in trouble is because of his massive ego. He's so self-righteous. In his last speech, there were people counting how many times he said he speaks in Urdu. So he's saying meh, meh, which means I. Well, the meh, meh actually was, was uh, just too much. And, and so... Many of his colleagues uh, do not like him for that. Um, several cabinet ministers are privately talking to individuals. Uh, one of them is a friend of mine where he has made remarks that, yeah, well, I have to stay in there because I'm a minister. It will look terrible that I, but the fact is my heart is no longer with him. Uh, his rally recently didn't attract the kind of crowds he has attracted in the past. Um, I think that he is just using the foreign hand for effect uh, to consolidate the anti-American sentiment in Pakistan. Now, here's something else. Hmm. The harm he has inflicted on the U.S.-Pakistan relationship will actually outlast him. The question is, will the powers that be in Pakistan let this harm uh, become even greater? Because what does it say about a country that politicians, when they lose support in parliament, they blame America for it? Uh, when Osama bin Laden is found in Pakistan, instead of saying, wow, sorry, we shouldn't have had him here, and we are sorry we had an intelligence failure, they accuse the Americans. Um, when America gives billions in aid, the Americans get abused. When America ends giving aid or withdraws aid or reduces aid, then they abuse America. So wouldn't that be a signal to the Americans, guys, we don't really like you, so please don't have anything to do with us. That is so, not so what Pakistan needs. So help us understand this. Imran Khan, when he won uh, his election, was widely seen uh, to have been at least supported by the Pakistani military. That's what Pakistan's opposition said. He was seen to be somebody who, unlike Nawaz Sharif, who within hours of his uh, electoral victory said that the Pakistani prime minister is the boss of the army chief, made no such comments. Uh, has this all unraveled merely over a disagreement over who should be Pakistan's eyesight chief? Or is no, there something more going no. on here? That is not that is not the case. The truth is that the, dis the, the disillusionment of Pakistan's military leadership with Imran Khan and the realization that he wants to be propped up uh, even after making mistake after mistake and that that is unsustainable because it divides Pakistani society. Remember, Imran Khan never won an absolute majority of the popular vote in Pakistan. So there are millions of people who voted for his rivals. Now, why should the army be seen as supporting somebody who represents only a minority within the country? It weakens the army's standing in the country. Secondly, the real issues are mismanagement of the economy, mismanagement of foreign policy, uh, poor governance in Punjab. Uh, mishandling of security issues and basically trying to live on rhetoric. Now, look, as a as captain of a cricket team, your job is to inspire ten other players, and you inspire them, and you say, "Bas kabrana nahi hai, akhri ball tak khelenge, ye karenge, wo karenge." Two hundred million people need decisions. They need policies. They can't be just treated like a cricket team that needs to be every now and then told, Inshallah, jeet jayenge, don't worry. Uh, ye match haar gaye, to agla jeet jayenge, koi baat nahi. Aur hume poore tournament ko jeetna hai, sirf ye match nahi. 
so you can't live on cricket analogies and in real fact the last time he played cricket was in 1992 so that's already many many years ago what living, what do you think has been his is, living of that has been his undoing and even now he's hanging in there still saying i'll play to the last ball what last ball you've lost the majority in a parliamentary democracy you lose majority you resign yeah what do you think has been his biggest mistake his biggest mistake is in not having a solution i mean just to a content analysis as it's called in 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 social science just to a content analysis of all his speeches the solution to all problems in his speeches is him there is no solution to the problems so for example the economy is bad well all my rivals are crooks they've taken money abroad i'm going to bring that money back and that will make pakistan rich and some people believe that uh, a mumbo jumbo the truth is no country in the world has ever been able to build its economy but 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 what but what has been the tipping point between him and the military what has been the tipping point i i i think i think that i can't identify a single tipping point maybe trying to in, in, uh, un, unduly trying to decide who will have what position within the military for example that may have been a tipping point but i think that the disillusionment now i don't know if you read what i write but i wrote of course article, always always i wrote an article in the print as far back as 2019 pointing out that imran khan's inability to deliver was becoming a problem i think i am actually surprised that general bajwa and his colleagues have been as patient as they have been over the last several years because um the rupee has been in free fall uh the uh, uh the, the despite influx of money from imf from china from uh, saudi arabia from the united arab emirates uh, pakistan has just not been able to overcome problems and 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 so at some point everybody gets tired of being lectured at and all imran khan has proved to be good at is go on and on wagging his finger this is wrong i they are crooks i'll do this i'll teach them a lesson yeah well what about running the country and i, I think, think your ps if i remember argued that an anti corruption plank in itself is not enough to govern a country that that's not yeah. policy and and he failed in the anti corruption plan too look the first uh, the, the moment he was forming his government he badly needed the five seats of uh, the pmlq in uh, parliament and so therefore he decided not to move against the pmlq although he had described the leader of the pmlq chaudhry parvez ilahi as pakistan ka sabse bada daku the greatest mm. robber in pakistan unfair i think chaudhry sahib is a, a is nothing like that but this is what he said he had to compromise with them then he had always said that the mqm were actually uh, uh, traitors and uh, violent actors and terrorists well he had to include them in his government uh, having done that then even now he tried to make a compromise and offered the position of punjab chief minister to pmlq which has a very small number of seats in the assembly in punjab so my point is that even the anti corruption slogan look humility is a great asset barkha when you talk from a position of uh, closeness to the ground uh, you are less likely uh, to kind of fall from a high position you talk as if you are the messiah you can solve everything the only solution to pakistan's problem is an honest leader like you everything is good that is not enough and so he didn't have an anti corruption plan he used anti corruption as a way of going after his opponents not to solve any problems lastly there was corruption within the pti and within the anti corruption process the, the, I mean, the, the, example, the, the pakistan's opposition has alleged that some of that corruption originated from the prime minister's own house fingers have been pointed at his uh, at his spouse uh, pinky peerney who famously uh, is, is is said to have advised him politically well before he became prime minister said to be in you know going by political favors in pakistan among the reasons that uh, the two got married now the opposition is pointing fingers at her as a center of alleged corruption well look we all know that corruption in our parts of the world is endemic it is a reality the low bureaucracy lives off the people they take money from them for small functions for small things the higher bureaucracy lives off the state they take money out of the coffers they get commissions and kickbacks it's a reality it's a bad reality it needs to change but promises of just dealing with that 
without dealing with the underlying causes in society. Why does it happen? People who have, for example, if you're a sessions or district judge and your salary is far less than the lawyer who's standing in front of you, then your temptation to accept something of a bribe from him is far greater. Now, those need to be sorted out. There needs to be civil service reform. There needs to be economic reform. There needs to be a structural reform of the power uh, uh, structure in the country. Imran Khan did none of that. All he did was play to the sentiment. Now, as far as corruption in his own home and around his concern, look, I have always said, I have always been struck by the fact that Imran Khan has no visible means of income. After 1992, he hasn't played cricket. Yes, he has been a cricket commentator for a while. But my question for that is, um, how much does a cricket commentator get paid? How does he justify this massive lifestyle? Now, if some of that money obviously came to him from his ex-wife, Jemima Goldsmith, who was the daughter of a billionaire. But the fact of the matter is that his lifestyle has totally been supported by others. There's a joke in Pakistan that certain political figures like Jahangir Kareen and Alim Khan, they are Imran Khan's ATMs, meaning he just, he just asks them and they deliver the money. Imran Khan's ex-wife, uh, who was his wife for a relatively short period, journalist Reham Khan, has written a very disturbing book about him. Uh, that even the household groceries came from somebody else. There was no, there was like he he wasn't paying for them. Now a person with that kind of lifestyle is just the wrong guy to yeah. be the champion of, of 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 eliminating corruption. So do you do you see his present wife as a in. Do you see his 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 wife Pinky Pirni as a political player uh, in this crisis? Well, I don't know crisis? her. And I, I don't know her and I haven't been in Pakistan since she became a figure in, in this drama. What, what I'm hearing or what I have heard from many, many sources. And we must remember in our societies, there's always gossip. There's always sure. baseless gossip. It happens in India. It happens in Pakistan. It happens in Bangladesh. The elite gossip about each other. So I don't know what, what, what's really going on. But the fact of the matter is that three things are very disturbing. One is, of course, that her ex-husband remains a figure in government postings and transfers and apparently takes gratuities for them right or wrong certainly worthy of of, of uh, 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 some kind of inquiry and investigation second that she pr practices the occult there's this business about genies and this and that of course muslims believe in some uh, 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 um, a, a species called jinn but but a lot of things about them are not necessarily uh, scientifically or religiously correct, but it is said that she has that. We don't know about that, but it's said. And so that is disturbing to me. And third, of course, is that many of the things that Imran Khan has done, uh, like in terms of timing of things and uh, when he will travel, when he will not travel, where he will show up without his shoes, uh, uh, you, you remember the famous visit to Saudi Arabia where he showed up without shoes. Um, uh, that was attributed to her. Now, whether it was her or whether it was him, and in the end, the buck stops with him. He is the prime of minister. Course. The of fact course. of the matter is that these are not uh, signs of normalcy. And, and to me, they are disturbing. I think what mm -hmm. Pakistan needs is uh, somebody who is human, doesn't claim to be superhuman, somebody who's willing to go along with various factions and groups because Pakistan is a divided society, somebody who actually reduces polarization. People say, oh, why are these people, you're showing the picture of the opposition sitting together. Why are they sitting together? I actually say, good luck to them. I yeah. really want more and more people in Pakistan's politics to cooperate with one another. Pakistan does not need polarization. Pakistan is in a very precarious position. It has the Taliban, uh, in control in Afghanistan, thanks to Pakistan's own policies. But the Taliban are not going to be completely in Pakistan's control. The Pakistani Taliban are going to become more and more active. There have been a lot of attacks by the Pakistani Taliban inside Pakistan. Pakistan does not need terrorism. Pakistan does not need violence. And Pakistan needs to go back to the normal function of a country, which is to care for its own people. And instead of that, we have been uh, involved in all kinds of rhetoric. One quick point. This trip to Russia, Pakistan's total trade with Russia is $200 million, minuscule, minuscule. Uh, Pakistan's trade with uh, America is $6.5 billion. Now, the, with the European Union is about $12, $13 billion. What sense does it make to show up at the doorstep 
of Prime Minister, uh, of President Putin uh, uh, on a day when he's about to annoy Pakistan's $13 billion and $6.5 billion trading partners. It just doesn't, in return for the $200 million trade that we have with Russia. Decisions of governments should be based on pragmatism, the benefit of their state or the benefit of their people. Yeah. Let me ask you this. I, I, I have some questions about what might happen next in Pakistan. But before that, a lot of, you know, the Indians would want to know uh, what this possibly means for us, for the India-Pakistan equation. Now, Sheikh Rashid, famously inflammable at all points, no matter which government he is in, presently a minister in the Imran Khan cabinet. Uh, he said, oh, you know, Nawaz Sharif provided the address of Ajmal Kassab referencing the terrorist, one of the 10 terrorists who laid siege to Mumbai on 26-11. Do you believe that the exit of Imran Khan, which, which is now virtually inevitable, will have a detrimental or a beneficial impact on India-Pakistan? Or is it a zero-sum game where it makes no difference? Look, Barkha, I am a strong advocate of normal and good relations between India and Pakistan. I've written it. My book is India versus Pakistan. Why can't we just be friends? I think it will be good for both countries. It will be even better for Pakistan. Pakistan will do well by trading with India, opening travel with India, letting Pakistanis not have this toxic view of their neighboring country. And also it will reduce the toxicity that is now rising in India about Pakistan. We must see the track record. Uh, the PPP government reached out to India. Nawaz Sharif reached out to India. The Imran Khan government, apart from his little cricketing cricketing a friend, uh, Mr. Sidhu, he has not been able to talk to any significant Indian political actor. Uh, in that sense, and then he has incendiary rhetoric, his own, as well as of his party, and of people like Mr. Sheikh Rashid. Uh, any effort to rebuild relations between India and Pakistan will require a lot of quiet work. Not everything will be on uh, uh, on television. It will not be on ARY in Pakistan and it will not be on Republic TV in India. It will be done by people meeting quietly and figuring out how to move forward. And clearly and clearly, some of that has been happening. Otherwise, the and missile misfire uh, would not have been handled with the way uh, it in was. A sense, and Imran, yeah. Khan, and Imran Khan's government is totally incapable of doing anything quietly. Uh, braggarts like Sheikh Rashid. I mean, look, let us be honest, Ajmal Kassab, many years ago, Mumbai attacks were wrong, period. It was wrong. What happened in Mumbai was something that, and I remember coming on uh, on TV within a few hours of it saying, every Pakistani should condemn this because this is just plain wrong. But now the details of it, why drag it? And if, as far as Ajmal Kassab is concerned, at that time, if you remember, the PPA had just come into office. Musharraf, I think, was still president or had just stopped being president. Yeah, he had just stopped being president. This was November uh, 2018. And <coughs> the details about Ajmal Kassab had been discovered by a journalist on Geo. It had nothing to do with Nawaz Sharif. But the fact of the matter is that if they did say to the Americans hey, uh, or to the Indians, yeah, we know this guy is one of us but let's move forward. That would be a good thing. Why yeah. blame him for that? So the fact that these people, you remember that Imran Khan during the election campaign used to call Nawaz Sharif Modi ka yaar. Now that basic, I personally think it'll be good to have some Pakistani who actually can get along with Prime Minister Modi rather than somebody who's constantly saying that anybody, on the one hand, he said, one of Imran Khan's great traits is that he says, I know this better than anybody. So I know the West better than anybody. I know India better than anybody. I've played more uh, matches there than anybody else. Things like that. The truth is, he really doesn't know the, 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 the political basis of cooperation and working together. And I think that Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif and the other elements of the opposition, look, Malana Fazlur Rahman of the JUI came to India, if you remember, visited Deoband, which is where the roots of his party yeah. lie. The PPP has worked with, 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 with India, has interacted with Indian officials. Not everybody has performed optimally and done the best thing, but, you know, they've and then Nawaz Sharif. So uh, is there any political party in Pakistan or any political leader in Pakistan who can 
just shall we say walk the gauntlet and really uh, 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 sort out everything with India? I don't know, but mm. it requires painstaking work that Nawash, uh, that Imran Khan and his team have proved totally incapable of. Let me ask you this in the end. Uh, Pakistan's military has had a bitter fallout with the other political players as well. Nawaz Sharif is in London precisely because of that fallout. There is some speculation that Mr. Sharif's brother, Shehbaz Sharif, is the best poised uh, to, 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 to lead the country next. Is that an assessment you share? I think so. At this moment, probably that is the most likely outcome. I'm not saying that it will happen. I'm not saying it is bound to happen. I'm not even saying it is the most desirable outcome. I think it is the most likely outcome. As far as the Pakistani military is concerned, look, it remains a very powerful and formidable institution. It has ruled the country for half of its life. It it casts a very long shadow in Pakistan's politics, but, but it has to deal with many realities. After all, there have been times when after military rule, the military has stepped back a little bit. Uh, the question is, how do the politicians and the military interact longer term to make sure that this does not become a zero-sum game? Can there be some kind of way that is not one of the two institutions, uh, the two, uh, not institutions, but the two uh, 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 actors, the military and the civilians, constantly fighting or one just like Imran Khan, totally becoming dependent on the other. Can we have a middle road here, like most functioning countries? But but here's the point. Despite your dislike or disagreements with Imran Khan and his failure at governance, as you call it, do you believe a defeat for Imran Khan, his inability to complete his full term in office, signals a win for Pakistan's generals? Or does it signal a win for Pakistan's opposition? There's well, this whole enough. talk. There's this yeah. whole talk of neutrality. The military yeah, being I've neutral, seen, I've seen, right? I've seen, I've seen, I've seen is it articles. really? Is it really neutral? I mean, if I've the military seen, wanted Imran Khan to continue, would he be on this week? week I have seen. I have seen articles in the Indian press, uh, sort of making for, formulating that argument that this is not a win for democracy. It's a win for for the generals. Truth is, you know, when you go to a casino in Las Vegas, they always say, "Remember." the house always wins. So in Pakistan, mm -hmm. the house is the military. It's a formidable institution to say that it, 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 it even after the debacle of 1971, General Yahya Khan was preparing to offer the country a new constitution and continue in office. If it wasn't for junior military officers saying, hey, that is not acceptable, he probably would have done that or at least attempted that. So the point is that the military remains a formidable institution. But I think that this particular outcome is a win for a um, political process, not necessarily democracy, because some of Pakistan's political parties have not completely de uh, 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 delivered democracy either. Uh, they can be elected, but they don't always practice all aspects of democracy. Uh, but that said, I think that it is always a good thing when the military says, you guys decided among yourselves, we are not going to influence the outcome uh, on a moment to moment basis. Now, are they influencing the outcome by actually withdrawing support from Imran Khan? Probably they are. But the fact of the matter is that the old pattern of uh, intelligence officers or military officers calling up politicians and telling them which party to join and which party to leave, that is certainly not being practiced at the moment. And that Very. is what has weakened Imran Khan because now the onus of keeping his party members loyal to him lies with him. The onus of keeping his partners happy lies with him. There's going to be no call by a core commander or a, uh, or, or the ISI chief to any politician to say, whatever he has done with you, I'll talk about it. I'll be the broker, but you stay with him. That's not happening. And that's what's causing him great grief. Never a dull moment is all I can say uh, in, in Pakistan, uh, much like our own country in India. Thank you, Hussain. Uh, Hussain Haqqani, uh, who, has, who is a man of many parts, author, analyst, think tank, head, former ambassador from Pakistan to the United States of America, and a friend of India and a personal friend. Thank you so much, Hussain. Lovely to see you and see you again soon. Take care. Thank you. Pleasure seeing you. Bye. It's great to see you here. Thank you for watching our work. 
If you haven't subscribed yet, don't forget to click the bell icon and subscribe to Mojo Story and support independent, robust journalists.